Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flicks on the Film Fist. Today, we'll see if MadPat really has completed the lore of the backrooms. Let's check it out. Starting it off with the run through level zero. Being chased by something. Looked humanoid. The lore! I have to show you the lore! It was MatPat chasing us. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, well, the show that knows that, that going on to YouTube to can be like no <laughs> clipping into the back rooms. You're minding your own business when suddenly it's days later and you have no idea how you've watched so many padlock reviews. A very, very beefy and very robust lock. Oh, would you look at the shackle on that baby. Shout out to Lock Picking Lawyer, by the way, for teaching me way more about locks than I thought a human brain could consume. <laughs> anyway, today we're returning to the mono yellow walls and like ceaseless hum buzzing fluorescence of the doesn't. back rooms. In case you need to catch up, The Back Rooms is an analog horror series here on YouTube.com created by indie filmmaker Kane Pixels. The initial Damn, video Kane uploaded in January of 2022 absolutely exploded in popularity, gaining over 43 million views and becoming the seventh most watched video on YouTube of the entire year. Shit, All thanks to its unique impressed. atmosphere, clever scares, and fantastic production quality. It was also built for theorists like us, filled to the brim with awesome ideas and hidden lore for us to decode. In fact, towards the end of the year, Steph and I even gave Kane Pixels a Streamy Award to honor him for all his incredible work. Hold on, folks. Sorry about that. I had to answer a phone call. We're back. This is a box that was uh, delivered to my house. So, Kane Pixels, here. Did I just no clip into the back rooms? How? <laughs> Kane, you didn't even uh, clip. I went to the back rooms. And I got you this. I'm just so honored to be accepting this. So I guess really the only thing I can say right now is thank you. But now here we are, one year flip? later from that initial upload, you know what, now with a story mind. that spans four decades of time and 15 videos, plus a few secret videos mixed in. The community has come up with a oh, ton of ideas to explain okay. this thing. Everything from alternative realities colliding to the back rooms being an incarnation of the ancient Egyptian afterlife. Our running theory here is that huh. the world that we see in the back rooms is some sort of simulation, like a giant video game or the Matrix. What we know of as the real sense. world is the topmost layer of that simulation. But below the surface, there's an infinite procedurally generated world of unused and cut content. Stuff that either didn't mm -hmm. fit or just the wasn't good enough to make the cut for the real world. And while I still believe that to be the case, today I wanted to take a step back and reset. The Back Rooms so is a tricky series to talk back. about. Nothing is presented in chronological order, and things tend to jump back and forth in time, with some earlier videos referencing events from later videos that haven't technically happened yet. Heck, the very first hmm. video that Kane ever uploaded is currently one of the last ones in the timeline. So today, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to sit down and make a definitive timeline of exactly what's happened and when, so we can get ourselves a clear overview of everything that's going on in this giant mystery that Kane's crafting. I gotta say this, MatPat, you You've been on a timeline bins for these last few weeks. Like, you're making a timeline of this, you're walking on a timeline of Minecraft, you're walking on a timeline of FNAF for like the 10th time. Maybe you should ch call yourself the Timeline Theorist. <laughs> that's a joke, that's a joke, don't, don't take it serious. And in doing Love this, and seeing Keep what fits where, and more importantly, what doesn't fit where, we'll be able to learn a lot more about this story. Spoiler alert, friends, there appears to be a massive time loop we're dealing with, and we might just be witnessing the collapse up. of an entire universe. Jump into those hazmat suits and hold on to the red guideline, friends. We're going in. The very first event that we see in the series actually comes from the most recent upload as I'm writing this script, Overflow. This video takes place on okay. August 7th, 1972, as we can see thanks to the signature of a man named Ivan Beck. Over the course of this two-minute video, you, we Ivan. also hear a radio broadcast about the Lend-Lease Agreement, which happened between the United States and USSR in, you guessed it, 1972. We watch as oh, an electrical August, or August. radio station is overtaken by a green glow that shakes everything violently before suddenly cutting to black. Remember that green light? It's gonna be important for us later. Okay, the video ends with the light. night sky now mirror reflected. Something in this universe has fundamentally changed. From there, we fast forward by about a decade to the early 1980s 
1980s, when a central California-based right, company called passed. Async begins researching electromagnetism. On May 10th, 1982, we see one such test Seriously, of a strange like electromagnetic a device. device in the video prototype. Over the next several years, Async would refine this mm. prototype into Project KV-31, otherwise known as the Low Proximity Magnetic Distortion System. On July 2nd, 1988, Async performs a failed the third the test 10. of the system, but it's their sixth test that really matters. On October 17th, 1989, at 5.04 p.m. Pacific, they power up the system one more time and successfully open a portal to the back rooms. They have made well, first bam. contact. However, this We've move has it. dire consequences. 5.04 p.m. was the exact time of a real-world magnitude 6.9 earthquake that hit California, killing 63 and injuring Oops. thousands more. All of this is confirmed in archival footage found in the secret video collateral.mov, and that's not the worst uh, of it. From that point sorry. forward, the world is just glitched. Small, unseen portals Whoa, into and out of the back rooms start oh, popping right, up right. everywhere. People begin no-clipping through reality, never to be seen again. Starting in October of 1989, the number of missing persons reports skyrockets. This is confirmed in the video titled Missing Persons. Obvious video title is obvious. We soon learn that some of these portals are even big enough for entire cars to slip through, like we see in a secret, undated video that must come from around the same period. Meanwhile, back in lab, Async begins to send in research teams. On February 3rd of 1990, they begin their first mission. Inside the back rooms, this team of scientists discover the body of Nicholas Bolton, one of the people called out as having gone missing. Oh, Fun fact, man. the picture used for Bolton here is actually the senior photograph of Nathan Barnett, whom you might recognize as Dad, from one of my other favorite oh! creepy YouTube series that we've covered here on the channel several times. Go figure, oh, it's almost like subscribing to this channel is a great way to learn about all the coolest series that you should be watching right now. Oh, Just a damn, random thought that popped into my head, but you know, theories. the subscribe button is down below this video in case you want to use it. Interestingly, Nicholas's body is covered in what appears to be some sort of black, moldy growth. Two days later, on February 5th, in the video autopsy report, the medical report on Bolton's body shows that it contains a mutant strain of hay bacillus bacteria, which is slowing hmm. decay of some parts of the body while completely overtaking others. The coroner questions Async Speeding about where they found this thing. Mr. Down May I ask, uh where this subject came from. Which Async must not have liked. During this video, a bunch of images flash across a CRT television, including one that states contract termination. Originally, oh. I thought that this was a contract termination between Async and the US government, but I actually found a wider, clearer version of this exact image in a trailer that Kane uploaded back when the back rooms was just a school project. And the version ah. of that document reads employment contract termination. So I'm guessing that the doctor started asking too many questions and was let go as a result. Next up on our time, is mean, February 29th, kind of 1990, and the upload often. informational video. Here Constantly. we see Async send in another group of scientists. This is also the first appearance of actual named living characters. In the group, we have Marvin yeah, Lee and least. the camera operator Peter Tench. During their mission, Tench gets distracted by voices coming from an unseen party in a nearby hallway. He separates from the group briefly to investigate, but almost immediately yeah, he's met with a glitch that makes the rest of the team disappear. Hey guys, do you hear this? Hey! And... <laughs> Without knowing it, Peter Gone. has jumped forward in time. We're gonna rejoin him in a minute, but back to the rest of the team. From Async's perspective, Peter's team didn't disappear, Peter did. He just vanished into thin air, and so the rest presumably returned to headquarters to report his disappearance. We see the fallout of Peter going missing less than a week later, March 5th, 1990, in the video Motion Detected. Hmm. Freaked out by an employee okay. disappearing with no explanation, oh. Async creates a new enclosed control room just on the other side of the backrooms portal. They also rig up motion sensing cameras near the entrance to track everything that's coming it's and going throughout the space. And it's a good thing. thing they did too, because that night at 3.53 a.m., they capture the image of a dark blobby shape moving across the ceiling. We don't know it yet at this point in the timeline, but oh. later we're gonna learn that this oh. is likely a black gooey monster made of a mutant strain of bacteria. The very same bacteria that infected Nicholas Bolton. We know this because Kane has posted a picture of the creature on his Ko-Fi account labeled Bacteria. We are definitely oh. gonna see more from that guy okay. later in the timeline. So a little over two months later, on May 6th, 1990, another group of explorers are sent into the back rooms in the video Pitfalls. This team consists of an unnamed woman, two men named Mark and George, and Marvin Lee, now manning the camera. The party comes across a strange okay. room with several holes in the floor and a door across the gap. One of the men carefully crosses the expanse, opens the door, and discovers a greenish glow. Instead of just saying what he sees, he calls over to Marvin to record it. Uh, Marvin, get the camera over here. Across? Okay, just hurry. 
But as Marvin yeah, tries to cross the room, bold. he falls into one of the holes Unless into a lower idiot. level of the back rooms. There, he discovers How an underground neighborhood complete with trees and houses and streetlights. But things are just a little bit off here. Houses are built strangely. No, sis, I'm sorry. How do you fuck up walking on an easy path? And it's literally just one foot in front of the other. You, you would only fall if you were intentionally falling. Whatever, whatever. It's for the law. The law! <laughs> Mad Pat, make that a shot. Signs are mirror reversed. Deep inside oh, one of the houses, Marvin finds a room where someone's clearly been living, Not but whoever sure. was there, they're gone now. When he hears a voice that's crying out, he goes to investigate, only to be met with another bacteria monster. This one chasing Marvin back to the hole that he fell into. That is not a person. Thankfully, Marvin's team's oh. able to pull him back to safety and hey. he escapes. The next video, Report, takes Success. place immediately afterwards, with the team returning to Async's headquarters and sharing what Marvin found. This clearly <laughs> concerns the Async staff, but because <laughs> of the important upcoming presentation with the US government, they decide to just paper over the issue for the short term. A makeshift wall is constructed, sealing off the pitfalls area for the time being as they further fortify their control room. Two days later, on May 8th, 1990, we get the upload presentation, where Async hosts several government officials to pitch them a space, their vision for the back room, an infinite storage and living solution. And they're just pitching to any old US government officials. Oh, Notice the DOE cool. watermark. These are representatives from the Department of Energy, including this guy right here who looks a lot like James Watkins, the real world Secretary of Energy from this time period. During oh. a video glitch back in Pitfalls, we see reversed text that reads to deceive the FEDE, which likely extrapolates out to deceive the federal government. I'm betting that this is text of some sort of internal memo at ASYNC, worrying about <laughs> deceiving the DOE. DOE during these negotiations. Regardless of any concern though, the presentation goes well. We see like Async talking to the DOE smoking. about contracts afterwards, and one scientist confirms in a secret video that everything went according to plan. Actually, that went perfectly. We've got all the initial signatures, and the contract should be executed by next week. Except, there was something that didn't go quite according to plan that day. Remember Peter Tench, the Async researcher who glitched out and disappeared? Well, after yep. witnessing his squad and disappearing into thin air, Peter tried his best to get back to Async's headquarters without any sort of guideline. And he finds all sorts of weird stuff on his little adventure, including a section of wall removed to reveal a secret area with forest print wallpaper, farm equipment, and the facade of a house. Eventually, Only Peter's able to make his way back to the back room's exit, discovering the new control room that Async built after his disappearance. He's able to open it with his keycard, but it sets off a motion yes. sensing alarm inside oh, at the crap. exact same time that Async is in contract negotiations with the DOE. We straight up see Peter in the Async control room from a security camera's perspective in the background. Just so we're all clear about what's exactly exactly happening here? This is over two months after Peter disappeared. Oh, when he glitched, months. he actually traveled week. forward in time. This huh, really throws mind. Async's leadership for a loop. In the hidden video recording 014, we hear a phone call between an Async researcher and his supervisor, Ivan Beck. Still on the same day, May 8th, uh, 1990. Ivan. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This isn't him, is it? As this conversation continues, the image of a newspaper fades onto screen. When reversed, this headline clearly reads, Fiery wreck beside Viney leaves one dead. Now, Viney is cut off and could refer to either a vineyard where they make wine or the town of Vineyard near Sacramento in Central California. Either mm. way, we can gather from this headline and the tone of the conversation that Async believed Peter was dead and that after he disappeared, they covered it up by staging a car accident so Peter's family wouldn't ask any questions. And when Peter realizes what's happened, that he's traveled into the future and that his family thinks that he's dead probably doesn't react all that well to it. There was likely some conflict with Async's higher ups, which resulted in Peter either escaping oh, the facility no. back into the back rooms or Async just launched him back into the back rooms because he was a security risk. One there way or go. another, Peter winds up trapped. I was about to ask, who would willingly go back? You managed to escape and you're willing to run back into that hell? No! I'm not even for a million bucks would someone want to go back to the back rooms. Back, back to the back rooms. <laughs> That's almost like the uh, Samurai Jack theme song. Back in the back rooms, which leads us to the next video, Reunion. It's a few weeks later, May 25th, 1990. After Marvin's encounter with the bacteria monster, Async uses a remote control rover to return to the Pitfalls room and confirm that it's safe. They send more explorers and scientists in, creating a safe walkway to the door on the other side. Of course, huh, we still don't go. get to see what's behind that door. Async instead decides to send the cameraman Marvin along with Mark and another researcher to explore the area around the Pitfalls room. Now knowing that there's a dangerous creature that roams through these halls, Mark a is shotgun? armed with a shotgun to protect the group. Wouldn't want to be on the other end of that. You wouldn't want to be on the other end of any gun, Marvin. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's the trio true. head into a new area with no ceiling lights and floors made from white concrete epoxy that's... instead of carpets. It's here that they discover Wait evidence that someone's been living in this area. Tiles have been knocked off of the ceiling, seemingly as a trail to follow, and a map has been etched into one of the walls. However, before the group can really speculate about what's going on, they're ambushed by someone who grabs Mark's shotgun. Peter? Oh, oh, add. Now, I was about to ask, is this level two or level one? Uh, the ones that got the smile, uh, which, uh, thirst for light. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know what I'm talking about. Mark? Marvin? It's our old friend Peter Tench once again. Ha! He's been living back here since his escape or banishment from Async. Peter laments that Async basically took his life from him, asking if they held a funeral for him, if his family thinks that he's dead. The group confirms that yes, they did hold a funeral. Everyone thinks he's dead. Async is clearly keeping the fact that Peter Tench is alive secret from basically everyone. I'm Despite being held at gunpoint, Mark calls dead. for backup, only for Peter to shoot him and kill him as the video ends. At this point, we hit a pretty oh, significant shit. time jump with the next video being a secret archive video compiled over a year later in June of 1991. Nothing really noteworthy happens in it, I'm just including it for completionist's sake. If we want something That's really fine. interesting though, we jump forward again to found footage number two, taking place on August 19th, 1995. That is over huh, four years the after the archive video and over five since the events of Reunion. In found footage okay. number two, a girl in a suburban home discovers a small portal into the back rooms hidden in her garage. God. God, it just, it, it went into the- After experimenting with it for a bit, oh, she's no. pulled in. Inside the back rooms, she finds strange giant furniture, yeah, a locked door that she can't open, and perhaps it. most strangely, a car crashed into a wall. This is clearly a car that no clipped in from the real world. Now, I originally thought that this was the car that no clipped yeah. off the freeway that we saw in a secret <laughs> numbers video, funny. but Kane confirms that it's actually a different vehicle. Given that Kane also confirmed that the numbers car wasn't Margaret Watson's car like I previously thought, that means that at least three cars have no clipped into the back rooms. If I had a nickel for every time that happened, I mean, I'd have three nickels. It's not a lot, but it is weird that it's happened at least three times. Thank anyway, you, the girl Stephen follows Smuts. a trail of blood from the driver of the car into an area of the back rooms that looks more residential, but Whoa. she doesn't find a body. Instead, she finds a room overtaken by black vines. These aren't just what any old creepy plants, it's the hell? bacteria monster who comes to life and starts chasing the girl. She runs back through everything that she's explored thus far, jumping Go down into a light. lower level that resembles indoor swimming pools. Eventually, she winds up at a dead end, but before the monster can get her, the room is engulfed in a strange green light that causes the camera to black out. All of this leads oh us boy. back to the very first video that Kane uploaded in the series, found footage number one. In this video, recovered by go. Async on September 23rd, 1996, we see an indie movie director named Kane filming with his friends before he trips and no clips into the back rooms. After exploring around for a and bit, we finding go. weird architecture, items that are completely out of place, and markings left by previous people who no clipped in, Kane encounters another bacteria monster. He runs away, yep. chased by the creature before being cornered and presumably be killed. As the monster nah, takes him, his not. camera falls down a hole, no clipping back out of the back rooms and into the real world. And while that's the end of the main uploads of the series, there is one final one that I should include in the timeline. Ooh, the secret, secret upload home27647.mov, which likely takes place during the early 2000s. This is just a home video with some glitchy sections and strange imagery, which I'm going to touch Whoa. on in a moment. How do I know that it takes place that in the aughts? Cool. Thanks to this frame right here. See that? TV over on the right. This sort of flat screen CRT television with the silver casing was popular back in the early to mid 2000s, meaning that at oh, least yeah. part of the video was filmed familiar. around that time. So stepping back and looking at everything laid out here, the main story follows Async's experiments, its employees, and its impact on the world. That much is obvious. But the more important story really? here seems to be the one that's hidden under the surface. Remember the green light that's popped up a few times over the series? It appears most yeah. prominently towards the end of the timeline in found footage number two, but remember it was also the first thing that we see in the series chronologically right now. Oh, in yeah, Overflow, a right. near identical right looking field. green light fills whatever station we're in in the early 70s. Considering that the building from Overflow shakes pretty darn violently, similar to what we see happening in Async's headquarters during First Contact, I believe that this was some sort of portal opening at least briefly into the back rooms. And not hmm. just any type of portal either, a time portal. And given how similar uh, it looks to what we see surrounding time. the girl in found footage number two, I wouldn't be surprised if she or her camera were sent back in time to the early 70s. 
Jesus. I know this sounds crazy, but we already are aware that time acts strangely in the back rooms. One of the major events of the series is Peter slipping forward in time by several months. Just so we know that things can be physically transported in time in this universe. We also know that things from the future can intrude in the past. In previous theories, we've discussed how one of the secret videos showed us a cough medicine commercial from the early 2000s interrupting a Simpsons episode that aired in the early 90s. That's oh, yeah. Here's the good part. You we can also hear a news broadcast from 2015 during the Pitfalls video, a video that happened mm -hmm. 25 years before that broadcast ever aired. Do you think that your current president, President Castro, will come visit the United States? Taking that to yeah, its logical yeah, conclusion, something physically entering the back rooms and then exiting at some point in the past is entirely possible. Additionally, remember the oh, name on happened. that document from Overflow? Ivan yeah. Beck. Kane zooms in real close to make sure that we remember that one real good. Ivan, Ivan Beck. Beck. Now, why does that name sound so familiar? Isn't Isn't Beck hold of my Beck. supervisor, Ivan Beck. Mr. Beck, okay, it is may Beck. I ask where this subject came from? Yep, Ivan Beck is a high-ranking async official. I think that this girl from Found Footage 2, or at the very least her camera made it back to the 1970s and into the hands of Ivan Beck and an early async. That could be the mm -hmm. whole inciting incident of the series, creating some sort of time loop paradox. Async gets sense. a hold of this footage of the back rooms, which then makes them want to explore it. They open the gateway, which breaks reality, and eventually this girl no clips in, winding up back in time, starting the loop hmm. over. But this might even explain even the name of the video, Overflow. Open time is literally overflowing and running over the edge. What's more, during their exploration, async may have just found themselves another time portal. The only other time that we see a greenish glow in the series is behind the door across the room in pitfalls. And get a load of this. As Marvin is falling down the hole in that video, we see a camera glitch and text hidden within that reads, oh. quote, while data could be inferred from the readings, nobody knew what would actually be found on the other side. What if what they oh. found was a portal to another time and place? That would certainly fit our description. Yes, Either way, whatever is. async is doing, it is bad for the rest of us. One of the stranger moments of the series up until now has been this extended shot from the very beginning of Reunion, focusing on a coffee cup with the letters ML, ML, and some coordinates on the front. Now, at hmm. first, I thought this might be some Roman numeral, but it's not actually a valid Roman numeral. You can't have MLM as a sequence in Roman numerals. So I opened up okay. our trusty old Google Maps and typed in the Could coordinates, giving us the rough location of the real world Moss Landing Marine Laboratories. Ah. So that solves the MLML mystery. And a bit more digging shows us that this logo is actually a riff on a real one that Moss Landing has used in the past. Oh, but the ocean that. messaging doesn't end with MLML. Okay, in fact, cool. I believe that we can actually decode the biggest theme of the series based on a video just drowning in ocean metaphors. You may have noticed that I haven't mentioned one of the mainline videos of the Backrooms canon yet. I remember. Well, that's largely because we don't know where this one slots into the timeline. There's no date associated with it, so there's really no mm. place to put it. In fact, yeah, not really sure difficult. that the quote-unquote events that take place in this video are literal. The whole thing is just renderings of important places and people to the async and Backrooms lore, angled and reflected like Inception or Doctor Strange, all oh. as a voiceover that's narration kind of reads cool. a poetic passage. It's more of an artistic piece, really, but it is considered part of the Backrooms canon. And here's the thing. The voiceover also has an ocean theme, just like that MLML reference. Just listen okay. to what it says. I had a home one, a manor overlooking the sea, but when the skies turned dark, the house was taken by the sea, cast down to the seabed with all the other forgotten things. All spoken as we see images of the ocean, but also really take in what this video is saying. The speaker had a home that sat beside the sea, but it collapsed into it and sank to the bottom, forgotten. This is clearly okay. a metaphor. We're not talking about houses and oceans. We're talking about the world and the back rooms and asyncs experiments making the world more and more unstable. Remember when I called out the last shot of overflow? After the green light flares up and something from the back rooms is sent back in time to here, we see the sky reflected at oh. the earliest possible point in our timeline without any other async experiments that we know of. But afterwards, we get more and more of that reflected imagery in I Remember as Async continues their experiments. This is even reflected in another line from I, I mean, Remember. Human, what you gonna do? You're gonna do everything. Consequence will be damned. Forever tearing along the seams of the sky until nothing remains except the eternal ghost. The reflections, yeah, those cool. are the seams along the sky. The tears in reality as everything starts to fall apart. This might have even happened before in a previous reality or simulation of our world. In found footage number two, we see parts of a home inside the back rooms as the girl explores the area, including this part friend. here with a strange banister and railway in front of an empty room. And here's the thing. This is almost identical to a room that we see in the secret Home 27647 video. Notice the unique bars oh. on the railing, the way there's an open-air 
entrance in the room behind it and a door off the right wall. This is the same architecture, but one is in the back rooms and one is in our real world. Want more proof? The girl takes a prolonged look at this painting before the bacteria monster wakes up and starts chasing her. And in the secret video, we again get a prolonged and look at is. that very same painting in the home. And remember, based on the TV we see here, this video was likely taken in the 2000s, several years before okay. Found Footage 2 takes place. So how could these details be in the back rooms now? Is it another time loop situation? Maybe. Or maybe it's because these are from previous iterations of our world. Of the simulation that was destabilized and collapsed into the back rooms. In other words, kind the house that fell into tell. the sea. There's a map shown in the Home 27647 video of the Ptolemaic system, a geocentric model of the universe that suggests that the Earth is the unmoving center of everything. And isn't it interesting that this very specific map that hmm. Kane chose to include in this video is very yellow? The last line, and I remember, is... <laughs> You have always, always been here. Been Everything here. revolves around okay. the back rooms, whether it be in a time loop or a simulation or both. It's the center of everything in the world. And Async's meddling has doomed the world to collapse into the back rooms once again. The house to fall back into the sea once again. You now have always been here. In this series, in this world, the back rooms has always been a part of it. We're just a layer on top waiting to collapse down into it. And laying out the story Kane's trying to tell here doesn't feel like our world has that much time left. But Probably hey, not. that's just... Just a theory, a film theory, and cuts. And hey, remember when I mentioned the yep. dad channel earlier in this episode? Oh yeah, well, that's how I'm gonna end this, and I gotta say, wow, that is an amazing timeline and series of events, and the back rooms is becoming more and more awesome. That's all I can say about it. But anyway, folks, that is where I'm going to end off today's video. I want you all to remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Down in the description will be a link to the original video, so remember to support the original cradles and show them some love, and I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.